Number four, use the second condition for equilibrium where the net torque is equal to zero to calculate FP in example 9.1, employing any data given or solved for in part A of the example. All right, so uh, right here is example 9.1, and basically it correlates with this picture over here. All right, we have uh, two children, uh, each with their own respective uh, masses. The first child weighs 26 kilograms, and that's what I have over here in red. And the second child weighs uh, 32 kilograms. That's what I have over here in uh, yellow. And um, the ch uh, first child is 1.6 meters away from the fulcrum. And uh, the second child over here, and that's what was solved for in part A, uh, she is 1.3 meters away from the fulcrum. This coordinate system here is basically drawn, if you look at the picture up on the right-hand side, it's basically drawn that way, uh, where the um, origin of the coordinate system is right at the fulcrum, just like we've been talking about. All right, so now what we need to do is somehow we have to solve for F sub P, okay, uh, by using the net torque formula. So the sum of the torques, right, in this problem will be equal to zero, uh, because it's in static equili uh, equilibrium, as it tells us. So uh, let's expand on the torques. So the sum of the torques, how many torques are there? Well, there's two, right? There's uh, one torque here with a certain force at a certain distance from the axis of rotation. And then there's a second torque produced by this force over this distance from the axis of rotation. So therefore, I could say that T1 plus or torque 1 uh, plus torque 2 will equal 0. Now let's expand on the torques, knowing that the torque uh, is involving the lever arm multiplied by the force times the sine of the angle. So then I can say R sub 1, F sub 1, sine theta sub 1, plus R sub uh, 2, F sub 2, sine of theta sub 2 will, also, will all equal 0. Already simplifying this, if you notice the forces here, right, in relation to the lever arms in the picture, they're both 90 degrees. So therefore, sine of 90 will be 1. So we can just drop that out to simplify this a little now. So this would be R1, F sub 1, plus R2. F sub 2 is equal to 0. Now here's the thing. In this formula, do you see F sub P yet? No, we do not, right? So what we need to do is somehow we need to come up with a formula that involves F sub P and uh, some of the variables in this equation. So F sub P, which is a force, right, is going to be related to these two forces in the problem. And therefore, since it is in static equilibrium, remember that the sum of the forces then have to equal zero. Right, so what are, the, what are the forces in the problem? Well, there's three. There's the force of one child, right? The force of the second child, and then there is this equilibrium force pointing up. Okay, that's F sub P. So I can all write them out in my equation over here that I have F sub P plus F sub one plus F sub two will all equal zero. Okay, great. So now um, what I need to do is I realize that here uh, I need to somehow get F sub P into this equation somehow. So you can solve this equation for either F sub 1 or F sub 2. It does not matter. Uh, I'm going to choose to solve it for, I guess, F sub 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do is essentially I'm going to subtract these two terms on over to the right hand side. So this would become F sub 1 will equal negative FP plus F2. Okay, now what I'm gonna do with this result is I'm gonna take that result right here and plug it on in for F sub one in my equation. All right, so let's do that. So now it's gonna be R1 times negative F sub P plus F sub two, okay, plus this term, right? R2, uh, F2 equals zero. Now the whole goal here is to solve for F sub P. So all we have to do is just do some algebra now, right? So let's do that. We're gonna subtract this term on over to the right-hand side. So that's gonna be R sub, R sub one. And also what I'm gonna do is realizing that all this is multiplied together. Um, well, I should say this whole term multiplied by that whole term. I'm just gonna pull the negative on out, okay? So there's gonna be negative R sub one multiplied by F sub P plus F two. We'll all equal now negative R sub 2, F sub 2. Okay, divide out now the uh, R sub 1, negative R sub 1 across both sides. So now we'll get this result that F sub P plus F sub 2 is equal to positive now because the double negatives will cancel. Um, R sub 2, F sub 2 all over uh, R sub 1. 
And then I would just subtract this term, right, on over to the right-hand side. So let me do that all in one step here. I'm just going to subtract, subtract f sub 2 here, and that will equal now f sub p. So here's the formula. This is it. Now all we got to do is just plug everything in, okay? Now we know the forces, okay? The, they gave us the masses, right? So we know the mass of the child, the first one, and we know the mass of the second child. So the force on the first, for the first child would be just uh, his mass multiplied by gravity. So let's write down F sub one here will equal 26 times 9.8, and we get a value of about 255, right? So this will be 255. Uh, Okay, actually I'm going to give the complete answer, 254.8. Just do that. And then F sub 2 here, same thing. The, 32, the mass of 32 multiplied by 9.8 and 313.6. So we got 313.6. Okay, so now we have everything we need. So now let's just plug everything into this equation. Remember your signs. All right, so I'm going to do that over here on the right-hand side. So here we have F sub P will equal r sub 2, so r sub 2 is a is in the positive x direction, so therefore I plug it in as a positive value, so that's 1.30, multiplied by f sub 2, f sub 2 is in the negative y direction, therefore this value when I plug it in will be negative, negative 313.6. Remember, when you have a picture, you don't have to really write the negatives in, okay, uh, because you do see the direction. Right, the picture shows you the direction, but when you plug it into your math equation, you have to give the sign to give the direction. All right, otherwise your numbers are going to come out all over the place. Divided by f, uh, excuse me, r sub one. So r sub one is pointing in the negative x direction. Therefore, this value will be negative. So this will be negative one point six zero minus then f sub two. So here is f sub two, and remember we have to plug it in. It's pointing in the negative x uh, x direction. Uh, excuse me, y direction. Therefore, it has to be plugged in as a negative value. Okay, all we got to do now is just solve it. Just plug it into the calculator. So the double negative in the first term will cancel. So it's 1.3 times 313.6 divided by 1.6. And then the double negative in the uh, right-hand term as well will also be positive. So it's plus then 313.6. And we should get a value of, and we'll round to proper sig figs now, so we get a value of 2. Oops, not 2. There's no 2 in the answer. I don't know where the 2 came from. Uh, 568, and that is Newton's. And there you go. That's the answer. All right, guys. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I will see you in the next problem. Have a great day.